So in this video, we're going to be talking about iteration control structures. In the previous video, we talked about how decision-making control structures like if statements and else if statements create a flow within our program and allow us to check whether certain events are true or not and do things based off of that. In this video, we're going to be mainly talking about the for loop and, and how, the, how the format and the logic works behind that. So what a, for, what a for loop allows us to do is to execute a block of code a repeated amount of times. That's why it's called a loop. And we as the programmer are able to set how many times that block of code is uh, being executed. So the basic format is as follows. We have our identifier for, obviously, with our, with our inside parentheses, our initialization statement, semicolon, a termination condition, semicolon, and an update statement, with our opening and closing braces and our statements in between, which is generally called our loop body. And I provided us with a really basic example of a for loop. And what this for loop does is it prints out one, two, three, four. And here's the logic behind it. So in our initialization, we initialize an int, call it i, and set that equal to 1. And then we, we say i is less than 5, which is our termination condition. So what's going to happen is when i reaches 5, this for loop is going to terminate, and your computer is able to continue uh, running the program. And whatever's inside is not going to be read. And then we have our um, update statement, which basically uses um, an increment operator, which is uh, increments i one every time. So here's how it works. So within this, obviously within our for loop, we have a, a print statement that's going to print out i. So what this does is it prints out i because i is 1. And then i goes back up and increments, and it checks whether it's less than 5. And if it's not, it's going to continue uh, to, to go inside the for loop and keep running. So it's at 2, and it checks if it's less than 5, and it is. So it's going to print. And then it goes back up to the for loop, and it increments again. So it goes to 3, and it checks if it's less than 5. If so, then it reads through the for loop, and it prints 3. And then again, up to 4, increments, checks, and then prints. And then it goes up, increments to 5. It checks that it's, if it's less than 5, and it's not. And 5 is not less than 5, so the for loop terminates. And that's where we get our 1, 2, 3, 4. And I gave us some... Um, some really basic examples of for loops and I asked what will this print so this is our first for loop and you can pause the video and um, because in about five seconds I'm gonna drag this little block off and uh, that reveals the answer so this says for int i equals 0 i is less than or equal to 14 i plus plus system dot out dot print line i and then I just use an operator here that says plus equals i this is basically the same thing as saying i is equal to i plus 1 but um, plus equals, I guess, is just an easier way to uh, read it. So, so even if whoops, so even if you don't um, exactly know how for loops work yet, you can really just use logic and basic math to figure this out. So what it does is, let me just delete this right here. We don't want that. So what it does is i is zero. So what what it's going to do is it's going to print zero, and then it's going to increment i by one. And so, so i becomes 1, and then it goes up and, and increments again, so it's 2, and then it checks if it's less than 14, and prints i. And then it, again, increments up to 3, and then increments up to 4, and then prints 4. And so what this is doing is basically is from 0 to 14, because we put less than or equal to 14, is printing all the even numbers because it's, we're incrementing it twice. So what it prints out is 0, 2, whoops, 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. 14. And there's an easier way actually to get um, the even numbers, but we're going to look at that a little bit later. And um, I did. I, I gave another example of a for loop that outputs something similar, but this time we're incrementing first and printing after. So we have we have our um, our for loop and our initialization statement is set i into i is equal to zero, and then it checks if it's obviously less than or equal to nine, and then it and then it uh and then it goes down here and it increments. So again, i plus equals one. So it's i. So so sorry, i becomes one and then it prints and then it goes up here and increments to two and it comes down here and prints to three increments to three and then it prints three and then it goes back up here increments to four and then increments again because we have two increment operators and then it prints out five. So what this is doing, similar to the the first for loop, is from zero to nine it's printing out every other number because again we're incrementing twice and what we're gonna do now is take a look at some um, uh, some more examples of some more complicated for loops
So what I did here is I created some questions um, to test your knowledge of for loops, and I'm going to ask you to pause the video and from there to try to um, create a for loop that executes uh, the code um, from what we learned previously. And what the first question says is how to print out uh, only the odd numbers between 1 and 15 using a for loop. Again, I'm going to ask you to pause the video and try to figure it out. But right now I'm still going to explain it. So we're going to set an int i is equal to 0, and again, I don't know why I'm using i, you can use anything you want. You can use, I don't know, hi, or whatever you want. I'm going to use i, because it's my favorite. And we're going to set i less than or equal to 15, because you have to think of how the logic works here. And obviously our update statement, which is an increment operator. And what we're going to do here is do something different. Um, what what we did before in our, in our first examples is set set it so that it's incrementing twice, so that's how it gets, um, or sorry, we set an increment operator within our for loop so that it's basically incrementing twice and skipping over all the even values when you're starting at uh, zero. But, but what we're going to do this time is we're going to say if if i percent, which is our mod operator, 2 does not equal 0 system dot out dot print line actually we're gonna do print because um, th I really quickly the difference between print line and print is that print line will print it uh, as, as a line print will just print it as one horizontal line so we're gonna say system dot out dot print I and again, uh, we didn't really talk about the mod operator that much, but the mod operator is basically a remainder. And so if we say i% 2 um, is equal to 0, that means that um, the number is divisible by 2 and won't have any remainders. But if it's an odd number, it won't. It, it will have a remainder because obviously 2 does not go into any odd numbers. And um, that's where we use our not equals operator that we talked about. And uh, we just set a we just set a, a print statement. So what the for loop is going to do here is um, it's going to start at 0. And um, it's going to read in. If 0% or 0 mod 2 uh, does not equal 0. And obviously it doesn't. So it, it's not going to print out 0. But it's going to increment up to 1. And it's going to see that 1 mod 2 doesn't equal 0. So it's going to print that um uh, that uh, that one and we when this is how we see how for loops and if statements work and so we're just gonna go ahead and run this really good for you if you figured it out if you use the mod operator or whatever it doesn't really matter how your logic works but this is probably the most simple way that I can think of um, and you see here obviously it prints out one three five seven nine um, eleven thirteen fifteen and our next example is pretty similar, but we're just going to, again, if, if you want to pause the video and try to figure it out or just watch how I do, that's fine. Um, so for an i is equal to 0, and i is less than, or less than or equal to 15, and what it's asking us to do is print only the numbers divisible by 3. So can you guess what you're going to do? You're obviously going to use the mod operator. You're totally right. If, if you were thinking that, good for you. So we're basically going to say here, if i percent 3 equals 0 this time because any number divisible by 3 won't have any remainders and we're just gonna say system dot out dot print line I gonna go ahead and, and run that oops I should do print not print line always use print when you're using for loops and run it and so what we see is it prints out 0 3 6 9 12 and 15 all the numbers divisible by 3 and so that's basically how the logic of a for loop works we're not going to get too in depth into for loops until we start learning about um, arrays and ways you can manipulate the values of arrays using for loops but for now we can just sort of just loop around and loop numbers together I hope that you, you got a solid understanding of how the for loop works uh, in next in, in the next video we're going to be talking about another iteration control structure and that is the while loop and the do while loop I hope to see you then thank you so much